Welcome to Programming for Kids with Scratch 2. I'm Mike Lehman, and thanks for joining me. This series of half-hour shows uses Scratch to introduce computer programming to kids, about fifth grade and up, and curious adults, too. You'll learn all about programming in Scratch in this series. It covers loop blocks, repeat, repeat until and forever, decision blocks, including if and if else, procedure blocks, variables, lists, messages, events, clones, even microphone and video webcam input. I'll create many programs, including games, storytelling, drawing pictures, and programs that demonstrate important programming concepts, including objects, threads, and polling. This series is all about doing and shows the creation of all working programs from start to finish. Scratch is a great first programming language and can have children very quickly creating and presenting stories and creating fun animations, all while learning valuable critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, and the fundamentals of programming without any of the confusing and detailed syntax. Scratch presents programming commands as single blocks that are easily snapped together to make programs with very little typing. Don't let the ease of Scratch fool you into thinking that there's little here. Scratch programs can do a lot of things. Very little math is needed to make fun programs, and I give the very few equations that I'll use in a handful of about 50 challenges. Scratch is free and freely available from a highly regarded university, MIT. With your web browser, you can create, share, and save your Scratch programs if you want to. You can also look online at literally millions of shared Scratch programs, and if you like, you can join the Scratch community. You can just sit back and watch this show, or you can go to scratch.mit.edu, click on the Try It Out icon, and have fun learning how to program too. All of these video challenge lessons and more are available at my programmingforkids.info website and at my programmingforkids.info YouTube channel. The countdown timer at the bottom of the screen shows how long until a program is first run. This show number 19 creates the beginnings of a platform game and a maze game. I'll get started. In this challenge, I'll start creating a maze walking game. The sprite will move around the stage directed by arrow key presses and bounce off the walls. I'll get the movement working so you can add the variety of things to make the game you want. I'll get rid of the cat, right click, delete, and get Giga. New sprite, fantasy, get Giga walking. I want a smaller Giga. <laughs> smaller Giga. A Giga is a billion. It's hard to get a smaller billion. Go to looks, get set size, set of 100, try 50, run it. I'd like her a little smaller. Instead of 50, try 40. Good. I'll have Giga start up here. Go to Motion. Go to. Now Giga will always start in that position. Do this when the green flag's clicked. I want to move Giga around with the keyboard arrow keys. Control. Forever. I'll have the loop check for key presses. Sensing. Key pressed. I'll break the loop up into two procedure blocks, move left, right, and move up, down. So move left, right will focus on the X positions, and move up, down will focus on the Y positions. I'll create the blocks, more blocks, make a block, call it move left, right, OK. I'll move the definition down and call it in the loop. Create the other procedure block, call it move up, down. OK, I'll move the definition over here and call it in the loop. When the green flag's clicked, the sprite size is set to 40%, placed on the stage, and endlessly loops, moving the sprite for left and right arrows and up and down arrows. I'll define move left, right. If the right arrow key's pressed, I'll move the sprite to the right. Control, if, if the right arrow key is pressed, if the right arrow key is pressed, I want to move to the right. Go to Motion, Change X by. How many steps should an arrow key move Giga? I'll try five, but I want the same value for all the arrow keys, so I'll create a variable. Data, make a variable. I'll call it my step size for this sprite only. OK. I'll get the monitor off the stage, uncheck, and I'll initialize it to five. Change zero to five. Change X by my step size, so Giga will move to the right five steps. But how will Giga know when she's bumped into a wall? Go to Sensing, Touching Color. 
Giga can sense when she's touching a color. I'll have black walls so she'll know the color to look for. I need the walls now. I'll go to Stage, Backdrops. I want to use Vector Mode. It's much easier moving walls as vectors rather than bitmaps. I'll make the border first. Rectangle. Get a thicker line. Make the rectangle. Good. Now I'll draw a few walls. Line. I'll hold the Shift key down so it draws horizontal and vertical lines. Draw another. Down. Over. Down. Make one more. And here. Now when Giga moves around the maze, she can make her way around the stage. Except for here, not enough room there. Everywhere else is okay. I'll shorten the line, back to stage, select actions already selected, click on the line, and I can shrink it. Finished with that. Now there's enough room for Giga to move around. I'll go back to scripts. Now I can determine when Giga is touching a wall. I can select a color, click on it, I'll select black, and now if Gig is touching this color it'll be true, otherwise it'll be false. It's false, that's right. I'll move her so she's touching a wall, touching color, true, good. Now I can use this. When the program loops and calls left right, and if the right arrow key is pressed, the sprite will move five steps to the right. If Gig is touching a wall, I want the loop to keep moving backwards one step until Giga is not touching the wall anymore. Go to Control, Repeat Until, Repeat Until Not Touching Operators, Not Touching Black. I want to move backwards one step. I'll duplicate Change X, get rid of the extra Repeat and the extra My Step Size, and change X by minus one to move to the left. Now Giga will move back one step and keep doing it until she's not touching a black wall. I want to do a similar thing if the left arrow key is pressed. Duplicate. Change right to left arrow. I want to change X by negative my step so it moves to the left. I can subtract it from zero or multiply it by negative one. I'll subtract it from zero. Zero. Minus my step size will be negative my step size. Repeat until not touching black, good. Change X by one, so Giga backs up to the right, moving away from the wall. I'll try this and see whether the left and right arrows work correctly. Green flag. Giga can't move down, so I'll move Giga over here. Now I'll try the right arrow and the left arrow. Bouncing off, good. I'll stop it. I'll make move up down from move left right, duplicate. If up arrow, I want to change Y, motion, change Y by my step size. I can get rid of change X's, get rid of this one and this one. Repeat until not touching black is good. Change Y by minus one. So it moves down. And for the down arrow, change Y by negative my step size. Get rid of the change X's. Change Y by 1. Repeat until is good. It's ready to run. When the green flag's clicked, the sprites resize and reposition and the loop repeatedly looks for left and right arrows and down and up arrows. If an arrow key is pressed, the sprite's moved and slowly backed up until it's not touching a wall. I'll run it. Try some left and right arrows, good. Try down, bounces nicely. Go to the left, bounce off the top, good. You can move Giga around, goes nicely. Lots of different arrows, move around, good. Up, over, and down. Good. Gig is moving nicely around the stage. I'll stop the program. I'm finished with this challenge. I encourage you to play with the program and understand how the key pressed, touching color, change X, and change Y blocks work. Try changing the program. Try making Gig smaller and drawing a more interesting maze. 
Try changing the step size for when arrow keys are pressed. It's trivial since all the arrow keys use the same my step size variable. That's why I created it. Try adding an exit with a different color or your own exit sprite and having your program finish when Giga touches the exit. Replace this forever block. Try having Giga appear to walk with costume changes as she moves. Try adding a timer to determine how long it takes Giga to get through the maze. Try adding sprites or colored objects around the maze and have interesting things happen when she touches them. Change your size, use graphic effects, play sounds, sneezing, laughing, coughing. Make your own Easter egg if you'd like. Try adding a point score, giving and taking away points, when Giga gets to certain areas or touches different colored objects on the stage. But above all, use your imagination and have fun creating your own game. In this challenge, I'll show a simple approach to moving the sprite around the stage in a platform game format. There are many different approaches and each has its advantages and disadvantages. Very typical of choosing between program designs. This program needs to be simple, easy to change, yet effective in giving believable movement. A tough set of requirements. I want the sprite to be smaller. I'll go to Looks, Set Size, change it to 50, try it. OK, I want it a little smaller, try 40%. Run it. Good. I'll make green platforms, go to Sensing. The spread will use touching color to determine when it's touching a platform. I'll draw the platforms on the backdrop, paint a new backdrop, use vector mode. I want to fill the backdrop with a blue-green, select rectangle, draw a rectangle for the whole area. I'll fill it. I want more color at the top than the bottom. I'll fill it. Now I'll draw the platforms. I'll make them light green. I'll want them to be solid rectangles. Rectangle. I'll make the floor and fill it. I'll move the cat down onto the floor now and go back to stage. I want to draw a raised platform above the cat. Go to rectangle. Draw a rectangle. I want to fill it. Fill it. I have a raised platform for the cat now. I'll move the cat over to the right of the stage. I'll go back to the cat scripts. I can see whether the cat's touching the green platform. I need to select the color to compare to. I'll click on it. Watch this color change as I move around the screen. I'll select this green. Now this conditional will be true when a sprite's touching this color. The cat's not touching it, so it should be false. I'll try it. False. I'll move the cat down some. Go to Motion. Change Y. I'll change Y downward, so I'll have to add minus 1 to it. Bigger Y values are higher, and smaller Y values are lower. The sprite's Y value is a negative 142. I'll move it. Now it's a negative 143, and it's still not touching the green platform. I'll move it some more. Move. Check. Still false. Again. False. One more time. Now it's touching the platform. I want the cat to always start here. Go to. Change the 142 to 146. Good. So how do I move the sprite now? First, I'll want the main program when the green flag's clicked on. Events, when the green flag's clicked. I'll need a loop, control, forever. The sprite needs to figure out where its next move is to when it's in the loop. I'll make this new part its own block. I'll go to More Blocks, Make a Block. I'll call it Update, New, X, and Y. OK. I'll move the definition here. And I'll call this new procedure in the loop to update the X and Y. I want new X and Y positions. I'll go to Data, make a variable. I'll call it my new X for this sprite only. OK. Move it over. Make another variable. My new Y for this sprite only. OK. Move the monitor over need to initialize my new x and my new y. My new x. Go to motion. Set these to the x and y position of the sprite. 
and y. The sprite will adjust the my new x and y values for the new location to move to. I'll use the arrow keys for moving, sensing, key pressed when the right arrow is pressed. I'll go to control, get if. If the right arrow is pressed, I want my new x to be a little larger. x values get larger to the right. Go to data, change my new x by 2 instead of 1, a little, little more. When left arrow key is pressed, I want to make my new x smaller. Duplicate, change right to left arrow, change my new x by minus 2. Now when the left arrow is pressed, my new x will get smaller. I want to do these same things in a y direction if the up and down arrows are pressed. Copy both ifs. If the up arrow is pressed, I want my new y to increase by 2. And if the down arrow is pressed, I want my new y to decrease by 2. OK, now the arrow keys can move the sprite when the go to my new x, my new y is used. But what about gravity? What will pull the cat back down? I need to adjust my new y by a downward value, like gravity. This gets a little tricky since gravity increases an object's downward movement. Slow at first, then faster and faster. That's why we're careful not to fall from high heights. I want to change my new y by a downward value. I'll make a variable, call it my downward for the sprite only. OK, move it under. I want to set my new y to my downward. I need to initialize my downward. I'll set it to 0 at the beginning. I need to update my downward in the loop. I'll make another procedure block, make a block. I'll call it update downward. OK. I'll move the definition down some and add a call. The call needs to be before the update my new x, y values so that my downward's been set. I want to think of my downward as kind of like the speed going down. Bigger numbers means it's falling faster. Smaller numbers means it's falling slower. And negative numbers means it's going upward. I'll right click on update downward, add a comment, highlight the text, Put the comment bigger number is faster down. Minimize. A bigger my new downward value means I need a smaller my new y since y gets smaller downward, so I want the negative value. A couple ways to do that operators. I could subtract the value from 0, or I can multiply the value by minus 1. Put it in. Now as my downward gets bigger, 5, 10, then this is negative 5, negative 10, which is further down the stage. It's a little tricky, but don't panic. I also want to remember that when the sprite's touching a platform, my downward needs to be set to 0 so it stops falling. Now to set my downward and update downward. If the up arrow key is pressed, the sprite should slow its falling. Go to Control, If Else, Duplicate up arrow. Go to data. If the up arrow is pressed, I want my downward to be changed by minus 1. Else, I'll use change my downward by 1. I don't think this change value will be close enough to gravity, but we'll see. OK. The main loop's updating my downward and my new x and y values. It needs to move the sprite next. Go to more blocks. Make a block. Call it move sprite. OK, I'll move the definition over here. And I'll need to call move sprite after the values have been updated. I'll move the sprite, motion, go to. Want to go to my new x and y values. My new x, my new y. I need to set my downward to 0 if the sprite's touching a platform to stop its falling. Go to control. If, if it's touching the green platform, I want to set my data to zero. When the green flag's clicked, the cat's set up on the right side of the stage, and the program loops, updating my downward for some gravity values, 
figuring out where to move the cat based on key presses, moving the cat, and correcting gravity if it's on a platform. Now I think I have enough to run and see what needs work. I'll run it. And the cat's falling through the platform. I'll pick it up and drop it. And it sinks through the platform, hiding. <laughs> I'll try the left and right arrows. Okay, it's moving. It doesn't point in the left when it goes there. <laughs> it's a very shy cat. I'll try the up arrow. Some left, up, left. Kind of heavy, heavy cat. And he goes through the platform, both platforms. <laughs> the program works some, but it's a little fast and the cat feels heavy. Too much downward pull. Too much gravity. I'll stop it. First I'll have the cat pointing in the right direction. Motion. I want the cat pointing to the right if the right arrow is pressed. 90 is the right. Good. If the left arrow is pressed, I want the cat to point to the left. The cat should start pointing to the left. Left. And since I'm making the cat point to the left and right, I should set the rotation style to left-right. Now I want my downward closer to gravity, and a little lighter too. So it's not so linear, I'll use a smaller my downward value earlier in falling. When my downward is less than 5, say, go to Control, If Else, go to Operators. If my downward's less than 5, 5, Data, my downward. I'll duplicate the change. If my downward is less than 5, then I want the pull to be smaller. I'll use half of this, 0 0.5. I also want to limit the gravitational pull so it's not so strong. Go to Control, get If. If my downward is greater than 10, I'll limit it to 10. Data, set my downward to 10. Now it won't get so large. Also, if the sprite's falling and it has a large my downward value, It'll have a large change in the go-to's Y value and could fall right past a very thin platform. Since it wouldn't land on it, it would land under it. And finally, falling. Well, sinking. Sinking through the platform like it's quicksand. This is a little tricky. Instead of checking for touching the platform, it could very simply loop while it's touching the green platform and move up one pixel. It'll finish as soon as it's not touching the green platform anymore. I'll go to Control. Repeat until. Operators. Not. Repeat until it's not touching the green. I'll still want to set my downward to zero, even if it's a lot of times. Get this out of the way. But it also needs to move the sprite by a pixel. I'll get change. Instead of minus one, make it one. Move up. Now move sprite goes to my new x, my new y. And while it's touching a platform, it'll move it until it's not touching anymore. Good, but do you see a problem with this approach? I'll try it and see if you see the problem before I show it. What's this repeat loop assuming? Incorrectly. Run. Good, the cat's not sinking and it's pointing in the correct direction. I'll try the left and right arrows. Good, I'll move it on top of the platform. Oh, pretty light now. Staying on the platform nicely, left and right, little hops. That's working nicely. I'll go under the platform. Falls down. Okay. What'll happen if the cat jumps up? It'll be touching the platform, so what will happen to the cat? What will this loop do if the cat's touching the platform? Okay, I'll use the up arrow. It goes right up through the platform. Why did the cat go up through the platform? I'll stop it. Time's up. The problem is the repeat assumes the cat's feet are touching, not its ears or head. There are several approaches to fixing this problem. I'll keep it short for time here. What if I make the bottom of the platform a dark green? Then the upward movement won't have the cat's ears or head touching the light green. So this loop won't drag the cat up. But I'll need to move the cat down 
to get its ears out of the platform if it's touching the dark green. I'll go to Stage, Backdrops, zoom in 200%, scroll down a little bit. I'll select a darker green, get a rectangle, draw it, and I'll fill it, solid. I want that rectangle a little thinner. I'll select, shrink, and shrink. Get that a little bit more to the right. Good. Go back to 100%. I'll go back to the cat, scripts. I'll duplicate this repeat until. I need more room. I'll shrink the stage. Move, move sprite up here. I'll change this loop. Have it select the darker green. Shouldn't change my downward. I'll get that out. But it does need to change my Y downward, minus one. So the cat moves down, smaller Y values, and drops down below the platform it's under where its head is touching the dark green. I'll try it. Return the stage to normal size. Click Run. Left and right arrows are working. Go under the platform. Try it. Good. Comes back down. One more time. Good. I'll get up on top of the platform. Try some jumps, some hops here. That's working nicely. I'll stop it. This is a simple start for a platform game for this short amount of time. It'll give you a lot to play with. I'm finished with this challenge. I encourage you to play with the program. Get comfortable with using a loop of key presses to drive a program. And be sure you understand how positive and negative my downward values work correctly. Try changing the program. Try adding more platforms to the backdrop. Or better yet, make your own backdrop. Try changing this update downward procedure block so the sprite flies differently. Try making a simple game with this program now. Add another color or a new sprite along the edge for an exit. But above all, have fun with the program. I'm glad you could join me. You can review these and all of my challenges at my programmingforkids.info website and on my programmingforkids.info YouTube channel. I encourage you to try the things you've just learned and explore the extra challenges I've suggested. I hope you can join me for the other shows. Until next time, have fun being creative.